Hi guys, and welcome to the Family Fudge. Today, the kids and I are gonna show you how to make haunted gingerbread houses. Now, these are very similar to what you might make on Christmas, but these ones are actually made with graham crackers and, of course, have a Halloween theme. It's fun for the whole family. So stay tuned and we will show you how to make them. I'm going to start by preparing the graham crackers. And since these are haunted houses, I'm actually using the darker chocolate graham crackers. Now because my kids are all seven years and under, I find that it's a lot easier if I actually build the houses myself and then I let them do the decorating part. And to make it even easier, sometimes I'll even do this the night before or the morning before we want to decorate them. That way they have plenty of time to dry and they're nice and sturdy when we want to add the candy. But if your kids are older, they could definitely help with this part. Each haunted house is going to require six sheets of graham crackers. And I always buy at least one extra box of graham crackers, just in case any of them come broken because if they're broken, they're no good. You need full sheets to do this. Now the hardest part of this process is really not that hard, but we do need to use a serrated knife to cut our graham cracker, and you do have to be really gentle here. I'm going to cut from this point to this point. I'm just sawing very gently back and forth, taking my time, being careful not to crush the graham cracker. But basically, I'm just creating a point at the end of the graham cracker just like that. And I'm going to repeat this on the other side. Each haunted house is going to need two of these pieces. So now I'm just going to continue to cut all of my pieces until I have enough to make six houses. Five of us are going to be decorating houses today and I always make one extra house just in case we have any disasters. And as you can see here, Jackson's keeping track of all of my discarded pieces. You can definitely use those to decorate your houses later. When all of the pieces are cut out, it's time to start on the royal icing, which is going to act as the perfect glue for our haunted houses. I definitely do not want to run out of glue, so I'm making a double batch of this royal icing using the Wilton brand meringue powder. Now I found this at Walmart, it wasn't very expensive at all, and it works perfectly every time. And to make it, I'm just gonna follow the directions on the packaging. For a double batch of the royal icing, I'm going to add six tablespoons of the meringue powder, two pounds of powdered sugar, that's this entire bag, and then 10 tablespoons of water. Give or take, it really depends. You definitely want your royal icing to be thick enough that it's not gonna run all over the place, but you also need it to be thin enough that you can pipe it through a bag. Now I'm going to use my very ancient Bosch mixer to mix up the icing. I'm gonna try not to breathe in the cloud of powdered sugar because I broke the lid to my mixer. I'm going to mix this on medium speed for about seven to 10 minutes or until soft peaks form. Now if you're using a hand mixer, that might take a little bit longer. If your icing is too thick, you can always add a little bit more water. But if it's too runny, add a little bit more powdered sugar. When the frosting is at the right consistency, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up several Ziploc bags, one for each person that's going to be decorating a house. And now it's time to assemble the houses. Now, like I said, you're going to need six sheets of graham crackers for this, and two of the sheets are going to be the little pointed ones. So now I've cut the tip off of my bag of royal icing so that I can use it to glue together the house. So starting with our pointed piece, I'm just gonna put a little bit of royal icing on the side, and then stick my graham cracker right in the glue. Now this glue actually dries pretty quickly, but you will have to hold it in place or prop it up until it's dry. And then you just repeat this process on all of the sides of your house. Okay guys, so after all of the sides have been glued together, this is what I'm left with. Now as you can see, these aren't coming together perfectly. I do have some rather large gaps. For this project, I ended up using the generic graham crackers for the first time, which weren't exactly the dimensions I was expecting, but that's totally okay. You can fill in the gaps with candy or extra frosting. And now that our icing is nice and firm, we can go ahead and decorate the houses. Let me show you what kind of candy we like to use. Of course, you have to have some candy corn, but I'm actually using the Autumn Mix, which has two different colors of candy corn and the little candy pumpkins. Aren't those so cute? 
And we also have my favorite, Reese's Pieces. They are the perfect color. You can use just about anything to decorate these houses. I'm gonna use some leftover marshmallows that I had laying around the house, and these mini chocolate chips that have been open in my freezer for quite a while. We're also using these really cute little ghosts, some Neko wafers, and some Twizzlers. We have some pretzels and all the leftover pieces of graham cracker. I also have some purple frosting, some orange frosting, and lots of Halloween sprinkles. Before we get started, I like to add a little bit of frosting to the bottom of each house and then secure it to the plate. This is such a fun activity for the whole family. In fact, even my husband and myself get in on the action. And here's what we're left with. This was so fun. Here's Mackenzie's. I really love how she decorated her front yard as well. And if we turn it around here, we can see the back. So cute. And then this one broke. <laughs> That's why it was important to have an extra. Over here we have Lily's, which is very fun looking. Lots of candy and sprinkles. And then here's Jackson's. He also decorated his front yard. Very colorful and fun. Over here we have my husband's. Now he had to stop midway and help the baby, but his turned out really cute. I love what he did with the Twizzlers. It really filled in that gap there. And then here is mine. Thanks for watching! See you next time!